222 day, we will talk about XLM, Sora Band, Mark Contracts, and how Franklin Templeton has played a part in turning Stellar into a number one chain for real world asset tokenization. And we will, of course, connect SHX and Stronghold into it as well. It appears as if Stronghold is prepared to be turned on and activated. And that is because of native smart contracts on Stellar. Up until a couple of days ago, ETH had major adoption as it's one of the best networks for complex financial protocols and dApps. ETH right now at that time had the highest percentage of DeFi and primarily why liquidity flocks to, to ETH. And here we begin to introduce the Franklin Templeton on-chain U.S. government fund, which came out in April of 2023, which at this point in time was almost a year ago. And we are just about to get phase two of Soraban and phase two is pr pretty much an expansion of the tested and proven capabilities of the contracts, which are expected to be very impactful for things like XLM, SHX, VLO as well, because SHX and VLO are concentrating on DeFi. And as that expands and as it is more and more adopted, which at this point, each of those pretty much has a lot of adoption that has already occurred. However, it just isn't public yet. And here is an example of that because on Stellar Expert, we can see that SHX is a wrapped Horaban asset, which means that, that it can be included in smart contracts. It is happening. Horaban smart contracts are about to change the crypto landscape. Imagine smart contracts with 10 times less cost and 10 times more efficiency than an EVM. It is not a sidechain either. It is built on Wire One XLM and is programmable via Rust, which is currently the most popular programming language out there and is extremely popular uh, among industry giants such as Amazon. Real world assets on Stellar. They have already been collaborating with industry leading financial institutions to bring real world assets on chain. And just recently with the rollout of protocol 20 to bring Horaban smart contract functionality to XLM. And here is an explanation of where that can and is headed. And they're not going to be overlooking it for much longer. As other networks look up to get up to speed with tokenization, Stellar native network features have continued to drive adoption from global financial institutions and support a strong conviction for the potential of on-chain RWAs. So it's not like they've just been tokenizing it. They've been leading this. They are industry leaders in tokenization. They've been giving the global financial institutions support to a strong conviction for the potential of RWAs on chain. That's insane. And as we go down and we read the conclusion of this, it's one of the most bullish things I've ever seen. Tokenizing assets on Stellar is user-friendly and efficient with the ability to issue any asset in only four steps without a smart contract needed. Now, with the launch of smart contracts on Stellar, the use of asset tokenization will continue to expand further into everyday financial products like lending, borrowing, saving, and automatic yield calculations. Now, we already know that Stronghold Net and SHX, which is the currency of Stronghold Net, the liquidity tool as well, as having many other features 
Stronghold Net has that merchant cash advance option with a selected pool of contributors. But do you not think that given that SHX and Stronghold Net is built on Stellar, that with the introduction of Soroban, that the potential for SHX and the use cases have just been fired into infinity? Here is an interesting thing I found, and it shows all that is in the Soroban system as of right now. For example, it has Aqua called out, which is a liquidity token on XLM that has AMMs and a lot of other things that I recognize. However, one extremely interesting thing is that HX is not on here. And I don't know why that would be, especially with the institutional ties. The only thing that I can think of is that it is trying to be kept under wraps because if USDC is on here, why wouldn't Stronghold be on here? And here's where we get into Franklin Templeton and how traditional finance is coming onto the Stellar network now. Tier one validators include Franklin Templeton. So you have one of the largest traditional financial institutions out there that is operating multiple nodes on chain. They are heavily involved in this and they are going to be one of the traditional financial institutions that is ahead of the curve as Stellar and XLM transition into becoming the primary public facing blockchain of the new financial system. Classic assets are about to have infinite possibilities on asset contracts and Soroban. But by seamlessly integrating into Soroban by way of SAC, the ecosystem enhances their utility without compromising on their core advantages, paving the way for their use in, in more complex smart contract driven applications. Stellar based real world assets make up about 40% of the tokenized treasury market, making it the second largest blockchain by TVL. Well, as of a couple of days ago, that has changed. They are now the number one spot. They have beat out ETH by about three and a half million of t tokenized tr treasuries. And that is huge because it shows that people want easier, cheaper protocols compared to ETH. And especially with all of the connections into the UN and the IMF and the World Economic Forum, XLM will be the number one public facing blockchain and XRP will be the number one private institutional chain. And I'm still organizing all of it, but I have on-chain information that shows exactly how extremely active XLM has been with direct connections back to the UN. And as far as the immediate future of how this comes back and impacts SHX with all of the DeFi applications that they have built and rolled out with a lot of adoption. The official line was that they had to fully implement the burning. And we have consistently seen hundreds of thousands of tokens burned. And I think that the highest amount was 500,000 tokens in one day, which implies that all of that is already working as intended. Companies like this don't just test things. If they announce a test, it's because it already works and is rolled out. 
I just feel they're all holding back until horror ban is 100% and U.S. regulations come in. Two things to look out for in March are the second governance vote, horror ban update, and a p- potential listing on uphold. If and when DeFi becomes available to to all SHX holders, that will be the most important catalyst. They would want at least two major additional exchanges live at that point in order to have enough volume where the public at large would be able to participate. And it would make sense that at least one of those would be uphold with all of Uphold's connections that go back to 2018 into which is an investor in Stronghold and chief technology officer actually worked on the XRPL and he is on an XRPL grants committee as well.